Romania is a nation torn and destitute from the many wars and conflicts inside its country. Because of this, the Institute in Basic Life Principles befriended this country to try and give them aid by sharing the light of Christ with them in many ways. On August 18, 2006, the first of three delegations from Romania arrived in Chicago. The purpose of these trips was to encourage and challenge these delegations to make Romania first in marriage harmony, education, dynamic youth, prison reform, and total health. At the same time, the great expedition staff that went with the different delegations was able to share the light of Jesus Christ with them and began to disciple them at the same time. When she first came, she was a professing atheist. And I saw her the next day and I just went to her and talked to her. went to further questions with her about salvation and I realized that she wasn't saved. And I said, would you like to receive Christ as your Savior? And she said, yes, of course. I'll, all right. And so we went to the room, we just prayed and she received Christ as her Savior. They said they saw a light in us, something that was different. And they knew that God was real because of the way we were living for Him. And they also said they saw an inner peace in us and that um, we didn't have, even though we had problems, they knew that we always went to God and we always had peace. And they wanted that inward peace and several of them um, were willing to do whatever it took to get an inward peace and that life to follow Christ. The first of the three delegations included parliamentarians, public school superintendents, principals, and a director of a major TV station in Romania. While in America, they were able to hear Judge Jim Payne, director of the Indiana Department of Child Services, and Christopher Ward, vice chairman of the Illinois Board of Education, speak about problems America is facing in its youth and families. During their time here, they toured downtown Chicago and traveled to the Northwoods Conference Center in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Well, I've enjoyed meeting new people, wonderful people. The nature is beautiful here. And of course, what's, all of the, what we've seen here is beautiful. No sooner had the first delegation returned to Romania than a second delegation of Romanian students and teachers arrived in Chicago. They traveled by bus and spent one week at the Northwoods Conference Center. Tubing, kayaking, and hiking were just a few of the many activities they were able to enjoy. The students were given instruction on chalk drawing and were able to hear from Mr. Guthrie and Dr. Gothard. The group also traveled to Indianapolis, where they were able to tour the capital and spent a day at South Campus, going horseback riding and playing soccer. The students were not only able to have fun, they were also able to learn more about Jesus Christ. The most important session to me were, was about forgiveness. And I could see how God works through my life. And now I'm so happy and I have such joy in my heart. The fact that I saw the people uh, the, uh, the, that they believe in God determined me to, to believe more in God and uh, to, to serve uh, him uh, more. The final of the three delegations, consisting of 60 mayors and government officials from the Bihor region of Romania, arrived in Chicago and was accompanied by Senator Radu Turley. After attending a banquet hosted by the IBLP headquarters staff, the Romanian officials were so impressed with the young people that they stated they wanted their young people to be like ours. The next day they traveled down to the beautiful Eagle Mountain Training Center in Arkansas. The next several days, the Romanian officials attended the International Association of Character Cities Conference. Topics were centered on how to transform families and communities into cities of character. The delegation journeyed to Watonga, Oklahoma, where they visited the Diamondback Prison. With over 100 inmates, they were able to witness firsthand what the Lord can do when you apply the commands of Christ to your life. It was an honor to be able to host these delegations from Romania and to share God's light with them. I was uh, locked up in the county jail facing charges on a murder charge. I was um, 42 years old. I was a heroin addict. So, yeah, I got into trouble. I started hurting other people. And really, I, I really believe I didn't even have a conscience. I was just evil. Prison. The very word brings thoughts of darkness, discouragement, loneliness, 
a place of punishment. Yet according to the Department of Criminal Justice, it is home to over two million men and women in the United States, many for the remainder of their lives. The statistics are staggering, yet for several, the prison has brought about a whole new freedom that they never would have experienced elsewhere, as well as direction and purpose for their lives. I learned so much about myself that I didn't know before. I've learned so much about God's purpose in my life now. But it also opened my eyes and a lot of these brothers' eyes to why are we are where we are today. And when I came to Christ, it was right then I knew this is why I came to prison. For these teachings that I'm learning right now, to be in this very unit among other believers, I really do believe the Lord uh, led me in this direction. And I also believe that the Lord knew that I would not come to, to truly accept the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart except for being oppressed in prison. Corrections Corporation of America is the largest private corrections provider in the U.S. They have teamed up with the Institute in Basic Life Principles to help minister to inmates across the world through faith-based teaching. CCA or Corrections Corporation of America has this program in 28 of their facilities. This year, they're going to put it in 12 more because they see the value of how it affects the inmates, the inmate population. Since IBLP and CCA have come together and joined ranks, it's been the very best thing we've ever done. The men who go through this program will have about less than a 12 percent uh, chance of coming back to prison once they complete the program. I see these men reaching higher and deep, digging deeper and uh, their lives being changed and transformed. Diamondback Prison in Watonga, Oklahoma started their faith-based program in 2005 and is facilitated by chaplains and volunteer workers. We're a community of 120 men. Um, it's a volunteer community that we come together on. And five years ago, I had the opportunity to go through the first basic seminar that was brought to the facility. And shortly after that, uh, they started the faith-based community. We start out the basic seminar. We do that, we do anger resolution, we do the commands of Christ, we do financial freedom. We've got guys that come into the program and they're going through withdrawals from an evil world. They're trying to get all the sin out of their body. And the program is equipping us in helping them heal. I know my life has been changed, but one of the difficult things I had was how can I get this across to other people in a meaningful manner? And one thing that this IBLP structure and class have done, it has, it has given me a lot of good questions to ask, it's given me a lot of solid answers, how-to practical ways of addressing and working with other people. And I think that has been one of the most meaningful things that I've ever experienced in my life, in my family's life. We're all a bunch of work in progresses, encouraging one another to continue working. Do we fall? Do we make mistakes? Regular. Regular. But you know what? got two guys picking you back up and pointing you in that right direction again. God has used the ministry of IBLP to bring the light of Christ to one of the darkest places in the United States, causing it to become the tool God has used to change the lives of thousands of inmates. I have seen it and I know it works and uh, I'll go to bat for it any day. Throughout 2006, the Institute in Basic Life Principles has seen God work in mighty ways, not only in America, but also in other nations. God is working through individuals to transform the lives of others. God commands us to be disciple makers. One of the ways we can accomplish this is by being a light in the darkness.